Hello and welcome. Uh, it's been uh, a while, too long probably. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about density or mass as an explanation for what we observe in reality. So there is this relative density sort of explanation which states that an object in a fluid medium or a vacuum will move towards the earth if its density is greater than the density of the fluid medium and away from the earth if its density is less than that of the fluid medium. And this explanation is used by flat earthers to claim that gravity doesn't exist. And it's often demonstrated using this sort of uh, density column where liquids of varying densities are layered one on top of the other. And then objects are uh, placed such that they uh, remain within one of the uh, liquids. You can see here in the, the green liquid, a, a red object is floating in that green liquid. Now this sort of demonstration is often used to claim that only density determines whether objects will sink or float, i.e. move up or down in a given medium like air or water, and that that explains the uh, observations we make. But does density or relative density really explain what we observe in reality? Well here I'm going to do a little demonstration to show that density is not the explanation. I've got a uh, container with some water and some pieces of wood. Now the pieces of wood are um, all of uh, the same density. They were cut from the, the same plank of decking wood. And there's a couple of centimeters or so of water in this glass container. Now I'm gonna place a first piece of wood on top of the water or into the water. Uh, I'm doing it to try and minimize the amount of air trapped beneath the wood. And you can see that the wood floats in the water. It doesn't sit on the surface of the water, uh, even though if we were to calculate the density of the wood and the density of the water, uh, the wood is less dense than the water. Uh, but it actually uh, partially submerges, which is uh, quite interesting and requires an explanation uh, from those that claim that density is the only factor that matters. If density was the only factor that mattered, why does this piece of wood sink a little bit into the water? Now, as we continue here, I'm going to place a second piece of wood on top of the first piece of wood. Now the combined density of the two pieces of wood has remained unchanged. We've increased the volume and increased the mass. Proportionally, the density has remained exactly the same. And now the piece of wood, uh, the lower piece of wood, has sunk further into the water. Water is now well above halfway up that piece of wood. So what caused the piece of wood to move down? And if I add a third piece of wood, uh, it's a little bit unbalanced, so I'll just shift them a little bit to balance it a bit better. Uh, you can see that the first piece of wood is now well below the surface of the water. So my question to people who think that density can explain observations is why does the piece of wood sink lower into the water when its mass is increased but its density remains the same? The a lot of people like to talk about independent variables. Uh, the independent variable we're changing here is the mass of the piece of wood. Its density remains constant. Its mass increases. And it is mass 
that is causing the wood to sink lower into the water. In my opinion, what's your explanation? So here is a similar demonstration from a YouTube channel called Cody's Lab. Here he takes a steel anvil and floats it in a bath of mercury. Now, steel is less dense than mercury, and we can see that the anvil floats. But it doesn't float on the surface of the mercury. It is partially submerged. And that's very clearly obvious. Now, when he pushes down on the anvil, the anvil will go below. When he applies that force, the anvil goes down below the mercury. And when he lets go, the anvil comes back up. But it doesn't come back up to sit on top of the mercury. It is um, partially submerged in the mercury. Why? Why is it partially submerged in the mercury? Of course, if we try to explain this observation and the observation with the anvil in terms of gravity and buoyancy, uh, it's very simple to do so. Uh, we only need Newton's uh, gravity equation, uh, which works perfectly well for objects of this sort of size, uh, this close to the Earth. And the, uh, the, the balance of the forces being exerted on the piece of wood or on the anvil, uh, force of gravity and buoyancy, uh, they explain exactly how much of the wood or the anvil should be below the, uh, the surface of the water or below the surface of the mercury. Can your relative density argument do the same thing? Before I go, I'd like to leave you with this little teaser. I'm going to hold a piece of wood up in front of this wall. Now, the density of the air surrounding the piece of wood is exactly the same in all directions. So when I let go of the piece of wood, how does it know which way to travel? Surely if density is the only factor at play, it should try to move in all directions. Or it should stay absolutely still. Uh, but it will move in one direction. Can you guess what direction it will move? Thanks for watching and I look forward to reading your answers in the comments section below.